and they'll tell me how wrong I am. But the article that impressed me most about the advantages of two sexes, particularly in relation to vertebrates and mammals, is one of the problems in evolution is to get rid of gut genes. Okay? You really want to lose those genes which are not, not helping you. And if females choose the males, it's, and in most vertebrates, it's the females that do the choosing as to which male they get to mate with. And this is regarded as the way of getting rid of those males with dud genes. And I like this very much. And it worries me tremendously that we may be entering a society where it's the men that choose the females, because then it's downhill all the way. <laughs> the experts in your life. But that wasn't what this is, this is really uh, Steve Jones's subject, and so um, I think I'll all, I think all, all I'll do is try to do a sort of schoolmasterly thing and explain um, why one might even ask such a question. I mean, what's the what, what lies behind the scepticism that males might be necessary? Um, remember that we're, we're not talking group selection here. Um, it, it's, we're, not, we're not saying what good are males to the species or the society or the group or anything like that. Now, um, one, one question would be why do we have sex at all from an evolutionary point of view? And uh, this ha has been regarded as something of a mystery because if the purpose of life in a Darwinian world is to uh, maximize the propagation of one's selfish genes, then uh, the best thing to do would be to clone oneself. And so there is a paradox in uh, mixing half one's genes with, uh, with, with a sexual partner. The paradox disappears if the sexual partner does exactly the same amount of economic work as oneself. So if you have mating between um, so-called isogamous partners who have um, equal-sized gametes and, and which are sort of halfway between egg and sperm, and so you need two of them in order to make a full-sized uh, full zygote, then the supposed advantage of cloning yourself disappears because when you mate with another individual, you get um, the economic opportunity to have twice as many offspring, so it balances out. The reason why that may not be true in the case of males is that, uh, economically speaking, males don't frequently don't pull their weight. They don't pull their weight economically with respect to the, the size of a sperm relative to an egg. And sometimes, very frequently, in fact, they don't pull their weight in, 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 in other respects as well. From which it follows that if you take a species um, where uh, females do all the work, all the economic work of bringing up children, then there really does seem to be, um, on the face of it, an um, evolutionary pressure for females to clone themselves, go it alone, and dispense with the male sex altogether. Uh, that clearly hasn't happened, and uh, it's, um, I think, um, well, one of the areas of discussion and argument, uh, at, at which point I shall stop. Steve Dinsen. Well, as I'm sure you know, it's, it's an enormous question. In fact, it's the question which is at the centre of genetics. It asks, why do we have a science called genetics, um, which de in general depends on, on sex. Um, when I start my first elective course in genetics, I start always start the same way. I say, I'm a geneticist, and my job is to make sex boring. And, and all the students look at me in amazement. And after 40 lectures, they agree I do very, very well. Um, but uh, in fact, that question, why, why males, is several different questions, as Richard uh, hinted. First of all, why sex? You know, why not just clone yourself? And there are, we don't know. One quite common answer is that by sex, if you're reshuffling life, life's cards, and maybe every generation will get a new mixture of genes, a new recombination, as it's called. And if somebody gets a bad habit of cards, they're going to die, okay, or at least not pass on their genes. 
And by that death, you're not just losing one bank card, you're losing ten bank cards. Somebody else might get a good bank card, um, and they will survive, and that life will preserve a whole new mixture of good genes. So that's one of several things that you origin of sex. So that's sex. But why sexes? Why do the males and females, why are they different? And why only two sexes? I mean, the definition of a sex is somebody being of a, of a, of a different sex from you, because you can make them, okay? But there's only two sexes here. I mean, how boring can you get, for God's sake? Um, some little single cell creatures have got 100 sexes. So they can make 99% of the people they meet. If only that were true for humans, right? There are only two sexes. And we're not, we have some idea why. But okay, we've got two sexes. But why so many males? You only need one. Okay, I mean, you have to give me some time, but you know, they're all this size. Um, but I mean, one of, the, one of the reasons there is that the rare sex, and this was pointed out, this is one of the early triumphs of mathematical biology in this world. And I can tell you there have been very few triumphs of mathematical biology. Um, R.A. Fisher, who I'm sure many of, most of you will have heard of, he realized that if you've got two sexes, um, males and females, one male would impregnate a thousand females. But of course, then it becomes very, very advantageous to be male. So that every male, however crummy he is, is going to survive. So males become more common. And you end up with this fantastically tightly balanced sex ratio, which is exactly 0.500 in humans at the age of 16. Um, it changes before that and after that, at the beginning of sexual maturity, it's exactly 0.5. So we understand that, but most of the rest of sex, um, apart from your computer scientists, of course, is complete mystery. Okay.